Now well, you can imagine how hard it is for us to navigate through them with big bulky cars. <laughs> Hello, Megan. <laughs> Megan's updating me about how much I love the Franklins. Is that what you were going to say, Megan? <laughs> right, let's see. Still nothing this side, but we're quite far away from where those lions are. They're in this drainage line, maybe about 200 meters up, 150 meters or so. Sort of. Let me see if I can find the tree for you. See? Yeah, that exactly like behind behind all those trees down on the under side in a sort of a narrow part of the drainage line there goes some hardy does nice sensor flying in a group yeah they should pop out now there they come the pterodactyls of the sky off they go making a noise you might have been able to have even he heard them so it's just difficult sorry as I was trying to say to predict where these lions are going to go to look for food Mm. Now, Sky Doggy, wondering what about those tiny little babies being introduced to the pride? Well, because we suspect, and I'm sorry I'm not looking at you, I'm just making sure I don't miss any animals because they blend in so well. Um, because it's, I think we're pretty certain that it's the youngest in Guhuma Lioness. Because it's her, she's, she's probably inexperienced, we don't know if she's had cubs before. That one cub that Ali found, that could have been her cub, no one really knows for, for sure what happened there, what the situation was. Again, we can just speculate and we can all have our own theories, only the lions will really know. Uh, so maybe she's looking for help. Remember the pride, uh, we're so lucky uh, to see lions because they are the most social cats. And I have seen it before where a lioness has gone off. The same thing happened with the southern pride, one of the younger southern pride females males had cubs and actually one of the other lionesses spent the entire period that she gave birth to those cubs right through till she introduced them to the pride they stuck together which was really amazing it's almost as if it was uh, a nurse helping her through the whole process whether it's true or not I'm I'm not sure let me just make sure because I'm I'm just going very slowly I don't want anyone to get stuck behind me and um, it was actually quite a sad process because this female that had then joined uh, the younger line, younger inexperienced lioness had mange and she passed the mange on to the mother. Luckily the cubs were fine and they survived. Uh, it was, remember I was telling you stories about the psychoptic mange, how we thought we were going to lose one of the lionesses. It was actually that one down from the Southern Pride, but she did a full turnaround. It was really quite amazing. So I wonder if this is not the case. Maybe the, the rest of the Pride, because they're really young to have been introduced straight away. I think it's quite amazing. Amazing. Unless those cubs are older than we think, but we've been seeing that lioness around, and we haven't really noticed any, you know, prominent suckle marks. So I don't think I don't think that they're very old. And just from the pictures, they look absolutely tiny. So, um, so it's just a very interesting thing. Uh, I don't know if they've just gone in there to reassure her. Like I said, the male's gone in. She might be a bit protective over the youngsters, and if the male approaches, she might growl that type of thing. I don't think Mfumo is going to hurt the little ones. Out of any, if it's any of the males, Mfumo and Tino have been seen quite often mating with a few of the lionesses. Remember, over the past couple of weeks and months, there's been always a mating pair, and it's either been Tino and Mfumo in Bovosoko on Arethusa or Simambili, occasionally here on Juma, actually mainly in Bufflesoko, uh, mating with them. So I'm sure they all know that they're the father. But not too many other big male lions that come roaming through here. So he might just have to hang back because he'll be quite rough. Um, unfortunately, the male lions aren't necessarily the most gentle. Although sometimes the females, they can also be not so tolerant of cubs, especially if they're not theirs. But it'll just be an interesting process to watch, won't it? But I'm going to send you back across to Brent. He's got not one cat, but five. We're live, Dave. Uh, I'm not sure. I think we had a bit of comms breakup. Um, so, uh, Kirsten, if you can hear me, someone needs to turn on the Kick Rock radio repeater for this area for us to have comms. Uh, I do. I'm live. Thank you, Kirsten. But someone needs to turn on the Kick Rock radio repeater, and I will change to. There we go. All the fun. So we've got different repeaters all over the morrow to make things work. Uh, no, the Kick Rock radio repeater is not on. I cannot wake it up. 
Okay. So we're still with the boys. They are heading down into a little bit of a valley where we could have some issues with gremlins. But once we threw it, it should be grand. And there are some wildebeest up ahead, but probably about two or three kilometers. So we got one, two, three, ah, we got all five. And it is that wonderful time of the day where we have the Mara to ourselves. Isn't that so special? Beautiful evening out here. <laughs> oh dear, so it sounds like there are a few gremlins um, <laughs> with us and they seem to interfer be interfering with the signal, but not to worry. Don't worry, I'm back, so you're with me and you you will hopefully see an owl soon. <laughs> Come on Sebastian, you need to help me spot an owl, so... Uh, but the, you know what, I find it's actually a lot easier without the spotlight. Just to have a look for a silhouette. Uh, right yeah, the spotlight is not dark enough just yet. So we'll see if we can find a silhouette of an owl. Oh, that's a hornbill. Um, not very owl-like. <laughs> As I was saying, it's actually chilly here at the moment. That cold front swept through um, South Africa last, or towards the end of last week, middle, middle of last week, and uh, I think it's at one of those Batalia, perhaps. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. See if we can get it. There's a big eagle sitting at the top there. It is indeed one of the Batalia eagles. Possibly, uh, I, I say one of, because we're in the area that we saw three of them earlier today, so I would assume that that might just be one of them. I think so. Lovely silhouette of the Batelier. You can see those long feathers hanging below the tail. It's got a very short tail, but the, the wing feathers extend beyond the tail, and you can see them dangling below it there. Oh, wow, hang on. Jamie's got some lions up in the Mara, and it's, uh, apparently they are calling at the moment. Well, we caught the last call, <laughs> the last little roof. So we have found a male lion. Unfortunately, he is really quite far away, but that's okay. We're very excited to have found a lion after having driven, I think, probably around about 100 kilometers already. I think we've done quite well, Viam. Let's just listen to see if he gets a response. This is shades of the TV show on Saturday morning where every single decision I made was the wrong one. Oh, ouch, you got a scratched up eye, boy. That looks quite sore. I think he's got a scratched up eye. I can't hear a response and I don't think he can either. So l during last week's TV show, VM and I searched desperately in the rain. Uh, it's a very long story, but we searched desperately for any kind of lion, any kind of anything actually. We didn't manage until right before, probably about 10 minutes before the start of the TV show. And there's a male lion here, which unfortunately is one of the places where we can't off-road. And I decided to stay with him instead of looking for the Angamas. The end result of that was he disappeared. And at the end of the TV show, when I was driving home, found the Angamas on a fresh wildebeest kill. So I was quite devastated. Not quite, but I just was kicking myself. Nobody, nobody responding to you, boy. Or perhaps they are and I can't hear. His hearing, of course, is far more sensitive than ours. He's aware of every nuance and every sound. 
Apparently there was a female with him, but I can't see any sign of her. One more roar. Come on, because we missed the first one. And I know that's not your fault, but it'll be very kind of you to roar again. <clears throat> Sometimes when they roar like this, I kind of picture it as... I don't quite know how to describe what I'm going to say. I kind of picture the whole Masai Mara, this great vast open space, and all these little dots of light that are the lions connected by the roars that they, that they create calling to each other, connecting to each other across kilometers of space, knowing where each individual, or at least every neighbor, is situated. You've been in a scrap, boy. this direction because this is the direction you want to walk in I promise hmm. I keep staring at that yellow object near his bottom and I don't know what it is. I honestly don't know what it is. It looks artificial. It looks human. Possibly, despite best efforts, perhaps somebody threw a bottle of something out, which is always upsetting to see. I'm not going to go and pick it up now, though. He looks quite ferocious with that scar. I don't know what that is. Oh, another big yawn. Often the prelude to some kind of movement, whether it's roaring, or whether it's time to get up and scent Mark. Very atmospheric evening. Oof, that is beyond the reach of our infrared, isn't it, Vian? Mm -hmm. Far beyond. It's already still my thermal pen. I know. I'm sorry, Vian. David's ha this afternoon or this evening has got Vian's, <laughs> Vian's, as he as he claims it, Vian's thermal camera. Oh, you jackal! Oh, you're very brave. That looked ridiculously close. I don't think it is as close. I think it's deceptive. But that looked ridiculously close. <laughs> Some kind of buddy comedy. No, I, I think that the camera... <laughs> Maybe it was going to find out what the yellow box was. the depth of somehow compresses but the image. thank you Vim. compresses the image so I don't think it was as close as it looked but oh number two goodness a reunion carnival reunion I've seen the Angamas nearly catch a blackback jackal once before looking at them, but he's not going to jump up and race off. And he does have a nasty scratch over his eye, but I don't think it's anything too serious. I mean, we, most of you, I think, of our regular viewers, most of you have been through the trials and of the various injured animals that we've seen over the course of the m months and years. Fumo's face is the, the one that comes to mind immediately. I'm going to take a chance and stick with this male lion, and it sounds like Taylor's been lucky. Let's go across to her and Mvula himself. Hi, guys.
guys. Bye, guys. Thank you. Shot. Hello, everybody. Right. Mvula. Hello, big man. So we got a tip earlier that Mvula was actually on his way this side. Now he is on our property, which is quite cool. And hopefully he keeps coming this way. I don't know why all these cars are on our property. That's unusual. I'll just go past them. So there he is. We haven't seen him for a while. We'll try and get a view. Um, I don't know what he's doing. You know what this old fella is like. He goes from left to right to left to right to left to right. It's uh, it's the normal thing. Uh, we had a really cool sighting of him once after it was raining, remember? And he came across the road very quickly, looked like he was stalking something and then uh, ran back across the road. So he might do that, but you can see slightly annoyed with all the cars that are around here. So we're going to give him room, as much room as possible. We don't obviously want to pressure him too much even though an old man like himself is quite used to all the cars and things like that it can be a bit bewildering when you've got 40 of them around you so we'll give him room we don't want to encourage which way he's going to go if he wants to go back across into Arathus and back towards Simabili that's fine it must be his decision so we'll just park quite far back obviously you can see we're not spotting him we've got nice backlighting from all the other guides which is pretty cool my goodness. Oh, I apologize for this. Unfortunately, this is what happens when you have sightings on a boundary. And like I said, I'll give him room. Little birdie, where did you come from? He's just walking down this, this strip. So Rexon was actually hard at work today. He was, um, so it came with a with a tractor and he came and he completely sort of mowed this area so it's basically a, a fire break looks like he's using the luxury facilities and we better take note because you don't want to drive over that that's never fun but he's looking good don't you think and I love this cat because of the fact that sometimes when he doesn't have a meal it looks like oh my goodness Mvula it looks like your time is coming to an end and all he does is he has one good meal and he looks like he should be the dominant male again He's a lovely, lovely, lovely cat. Let's see what he's going to do, though. You're going to go back across again? We'll just be very patient and see what he does. Like I said, we'll give him room. We'll let him decide where he wants to go to. He's looking back this way. I wonder if he didn't... There's not much of a breeze anymore. It's completely died down. But I wonder if he didn't perhaps get the scent of those lions. Because he crossed the road and he sort of was going towards the drainage line where all those lions were. And then he very quickly went west. And you see how he keeps looking behind him as well? Maybe he knows. And he's an old cat. He's very experienced in terms of the bush. And he knows. Lions are not one to mess with because they can also climb trees. Not as well as a leopard can, of course. There we go. We can spray the turn. Yes. <laughs> right. But let's just make sure we don't drive in the dung. He's crossed onto our side now, so this is pretty cool. Yay! Yeah, I'm so excited because I said I'm never looking for another leopard again in terms of tracking. Oh no, now we've got to try and follow him through the thick stuff. Well, that could be exciting. Okay, oof. four by four we go. Okay, luckily he's walking on a bit of an animal pathway, so that's all right for us. I do want to let Andrew, I did tell Andrew and Aubrey because they actually gave me the update and they said he was coming this way. So I just want to make sure that they see where I'm going. I think that's them there. There he goes. So now he's moving well away from the road. Nobody else can come in here other than the other guides that can traverse on Juma. It's going to be a tricky one trying to follow him in here. Senator, can I ask a favor? Can we turn the presenter light just down a little bit? Whew. So we're going to tr keep trying to follow him, and then I can see Andrew, so I'm going to have a chat to him. We're going to send you across to Byron, and we'll be back with you shortly. Well, that's exciting that Taylor managed to get that male leopard. It sounds like Mvula. That's wonderful. Uh, we're just scanning the trees, and I'm trying to see... Maybe we have any luck with some nocturnal animals tonight. Maybe a genet or who knows, who knows, maybe even a civet. I actually did see a civet in the Timavati. That was one highlight over there. We got to see a civet. Don't see them that often. That was really nice. I'm still scanning for owls though. 
can't seem to find any tonight. I haven't heard any. Oh, a scrub here. Oh, there it goes. It just disappeared off into this little area around here. There he is. There he is. It's actually good to stop like this. Maybe we hear an owl close by. I can hear a scops owl in the distance. Can't hear anything else just yet. Oh, nice to see. Sorry, Sam. <laughs> nice Are to see that. Uh, is it all right? Do you want to try? There we go. There he goes. and peaceful scops owls calling it or a scops owl calling in the distance one of my favorite sounds I really really enjoy the scops owl I managed to see quite a few two weeks ago three weeks ago all right now it sounds like the ladies have all the cats this afternoon well I suppose and Brent's but Jamie has got a lioness she wants to show you now don't worry, Byron, you can dream of cats tonight. Oh, let's be quiet for a sec. Thank you, girl. She's listening to the male call behind us and waiting for the rest of her pride, I think, to call in response. She does look massive. She's really large. Mother of the youngest cubs and I think that's why she's separate from the rest of the group I think I mean just taking her at first glance and I suspect that's why she's separate from the rest of the pride the, the rest of the cubs and for our new viewers the cubs the, the blah, 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 blah. let's try that again <laughs> the cubs the lions the 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 Angama Pride has four lionesses and 13 cubs, and the youngest ones are still quite tiny. And I think the rest, rest of the cubs are definitely all old enough to spend time with the, with the females, but she has to come back to these. Right, I'm going to try and remember how to speak. Let's go back to Mvula and Taylor, who I'm sure will do a better job. How amazing is this? We are so lucky. So, some more interesting developments. Apparently, Tangana has also crossed onto the property. Uh, I didn't quite hear exactly what happened. Andrew very quickly just mentioned to me, he said, apparently, Tangana's come on. So, I don't know if they're tracking one another. I don't know what's actually going on at the moment. Obviously, there's so much that we don't understand with these animals. I'm going to stop here because we're going to get some interesting lighting from the other cars which is very cool. Look at that. That is so beautiful. I'm all for a backlit cat. And there's lots of photographic guests around at the moment, which is really nice. And this is one of the most beautiful cats in the Sabi sand. I think he was 
Well, the original blue-eyed boy, wasn't he? <laughs> Tumba has definitely got lovely blue eyes. Here he goes, just stopping for a moment in between the guari trees. And he's got a full belly. So he's obviously been on a kill. Like I said, he is looking outstanding. Let me jump up in front again. Senzel, maybe we'll get him walking towards us. Uh, I love this cat. Every single time I see him, I love him more and more. And I would have loved to have seen him when he was in his prime. Oh, spotted thickening, you better stand still. Uh, just because, you know, a few years ago, wow, the cat that he would have been. Not that he's nothing uh, sort of to be reckoned with now. He, I, is he... I don't know if he's maybe looking for, if he wants to catch something, if he's hunting, or if he's indeed tracking. I don't know if he'd want to go and pick a fight with Tingana, though. But he he's stopping, he's listening. He also seems to be slightly nervous, don't you think? Or have you heard something? Let's see what happens here. Ears pricked forward. His attention is focused. It could be a meal. It's really hard to say, though. Well, there's no point us putting our infrared on now, uh, just because there's going to be lots and lots of spotlights on him. I said there's photographic guests, so we might as well utilize it as well and put a bit of color. We'll even help the guys out when he walks to them. We'll try and backlight him for the photographic guests, seeing as though they've been doing such a kind job for us. How cool is that? Watch out, Mvula. You're about to fall into a mud wallow. Well, a little hole of some sort. What a stunning cat. I'm going to just dim mine now, just because there's a light on him. We don't want to put too many lights on him at once. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. So, too many cats today. It's fantastic. Jamie has got a lioness doing a bit of a call. <coughs> Just caught the end of it there. Kirsty did an amazing job. But um, the delay between us and Juma is slightly longer. That's okay. She'll roar again for us. What was making that sound? Where are your cubbles? Where are your little ones, Mum? Oh, did that not taste very nice? <laughs> that expression on her face. Oh. My feet smell. Oh, she's beautiful. How's that? Lion, Mvula, and those cheetah, all in one afternoon. And of course, we're sitting now. I can't see her anymore with my own eyes. The infrared does an amazing job of allowing us to view them at night. I'm going to stick with her tonight, I think. I'm sure she will head off and reunite with the rest of the females. She's ignoring the males roaring completely, and the males are actually getting further and further away from us. <clears throat> mm. How those teeth. And of course, a lion roaring never gets old. It is the most extraordinary sound. A lot of people are saying it never ceases to amaze you and that they, uh, that you all just love that sound. I do too. And sitting with her and feeling it vibrate through your chest is a special experience. And what's interesting about her roar is, and Viam and I both came to this independent conclusion, her sort of, her tailing end roars, I've forgotten what they're called, the oof, oof. Oof, sound at the end. She, they go on for a really long time. Longer than I've heard other lionesses do that for. I wonder if that's a Mara thing or just unique to this lioness. Or unique to the situation. We'll have to compare and contrast. Okay, sleepy lioness, let's go. Let's let you rest and send all of you guys back across to Mvula. We're still with the most incredible leopard. You know what? I really like this boy. I'm, I'm ready to say that he could be my favorite 
big male leopard. I like Tangana, he's really cool, but I just like the whole story behind Mvula, how he once was the reigning sort of king. Oh, sorry, you're welcome to turn the light back up now. It was just when I was doing that hectic off-roading that I was completely blinded, and then I was trying to look forward, and I couldn't see what was going on. And because my lights are so much brighter than everyone else's as well, I'm too scared to put them on. And so I'm trying to drive with my spotlight and also put my mic pack in my pocket again, because it fell out. So we'll just try and get another position. Ken, I'm not going to blind anyone. So I'll just zoom through here quickly. We know how... Well, I, I was going to say, Wendy's not really nimble. That's a strong word to use. Are we on a road? Oh, hallelujah. How cool is that? That's pretty amazing. Now, Francis, all the way from Israel, wondering if Tingana would fight him. Oh, most certainly, but Mvula has got some tricks up his sleeve. He, he isn't really marking, like we don't see him scent marking and spraying up against trees anymore. So I like to refer to him as being in retirement. So he's got, he doesn't really have a territory anymore. He just sort of moves in between the other leopards and other leopards being really Tingana. And when Tangana picks up on him, and if he's made a kill, he's quite happy to drop it and let Tangana have it without a fight. And then he'll go off and he'll catch something else. It's almost like he baits him and then he gets a couple of days of freedom. That's beautiful. But he is very careful. He'll be vigilant. But let's go back across to Jamie in the Mara with the calling cats. Mm. Don't do it, girl. Oh, don't do that. <laughs> you gave me such false hope. Kirsty's going to beat me when I get back to camp. I made Kirsty ask for a link again. Not, I didn't make Kirsty ask. I just told Kirsty that the lioness was roaring. <laughs> Twisted her arm from afar. Oh, no. Oh, girl, come on, you've got to help me out here. She was calling, I promise. She was contact calling. I have faith, too. She's listening now. You can literally hear the crickets chirping. <laughs> oh, girl, break my heart. To make up for tearing everyone away from Mvula? Thank you, girl. When you're finished, we're going to send you across to Brent and his cheetah. Okay. Okay, look at this. I don't know if we're live. I can't hear Kirsten properly. They have taken down a sub-adult zebra just now. And as Dave was trying to put the IR lights on, they disappeared. But they've just come into signal area. Now, this is incredible. Now, this is what having a coalition of five boys. And you can hear the distress of all the zebras around. <laughs> This is amazing. Now, a single cheetah wouldn't even venture at a zebra this size. Now, please be warned, um, the zebra is still alive, so they will start feeding on it. So if you are sensitive, it might be a good time to go grab a cup of coffee. Now, this is coming to you live from Kenya. The Musketeer Cheetah Coalition have taken down a sub-adult zebra.
Uh, that zebra doesn't look to be in the best condition. Maybe that's another reason why they did it. Now, of course, oh, I think the hyenas are already on their way. Can hear some hissing. No, it's the zebras coming back in. Let me get to the other side. Now, I have seen zebras do this to wild dogs before. When wild dogs have grabbed a young one, they have charged back in to try chase off. Now, you'll notice you won't see me now. We've switched to the low light camera. Um, so the, the low light camera, is, so it, it's got a big lens on it, so you won't be able to see me, but it does give us incredible light. Now you can hear the zebras around. I thought that the cheetah were hissing at a hyena, but it wasn't. They were hissing at probably what's the mother charging in. Oh, it looks like D'Artagnan's actually on the stranglehold. Is it D'Artagnan with the collar? Oh, no, it's not. How many cheetah have we got here? One, two... No, all five are there. Oh, it is incredible the light we're getting off this low light camera. Go. Oh, no, not quite. Not quite done yet. Poor little zebra. As I said, it doesn't look like it's in the best condition. And this is a big meal for these five boys. is the circle of life out here on the African plains. Tico's wondering how long will a kill of this size provide food for the brothers? Not as long as you would think. Now the biggest problem for them here is possibly other predators, lions or hyenas, would have heard all this disturbance, the alarm calls from the mother zebra and all the stampeding of hooves and it might bring them in, hyenas specifically. So, but if they had time and no other outside threats and they managed to eat this whole carcass, it should last them through till tomorrow. And you can see how nervous they are looking around constantly now Bobby's wondering why do they have such a hard time tearing into the hide well they don't have nearly as well developed teeth as lions and leopards and hyenas so it takes them a little bit longer to cut through I'm just going to check with my spotlight quickly see if there's any Hyenas in there. So far, so good for the cheetah boys. Not a sign of a hyena around us, just. Oof! Shouting at each other. Now, cheetah will often start at the rump. The rump is the best spot to start feeding from. Now, you can see there's about four of them at the rump and only one up ahead. Now, the, the reason for that is there's a lot of meat there, very little bone, um, and they are able to wolf down as much as possible before other potential predators come in and steal their kill. Uh, remember we are using a special low light camera that is being able to bring this to us and that's why you won't be seeing me. It's, I got the lens that doesn't go that wide. You can see they're very, very alert. And it sounds like some of you guys are getting some great screenshots of the boys.
Now, this is sort of the perfect time for cheetah to hunt because at just that hour after sunset uh, where their eyes are just that little bit better than everyone else's and they are able uh, to take advantage of the fading light that doesn't work in the prey's eyes okay well it's while these cheetah boys are still stationary well, we're going to go across to jamie and her lioness and of course our lioness i'm sure thinking of taking advantage of the fading light as well as she glances off into the distance we're going to do our utmost to stick with her and across the way towards the other side of the road we can off-road and this side we can't off-road that was very slick for him very very cool um we're going to move across if we if she goes that way then we'll be able to follow her and we'll be able to see how the angama's evening plays out because i'm sure she's going to be planning on catching up with the rest of the ladies She's certainly been vocal about it. Okay, quick. Who's a woman with a loud voice? Oh, this could get dangerous. Never mind. I was trying to think of an actress too. <laughs> Tina Turner. Tina Turner. <laughs> Kirsty says Aretha Frank Aretha Frank uh, Franklin. I've forgotten how to speak. <laughs> VM says Tina Turner. I feel like I'm going to take myself down the road of insulting somebody somewhere. But she's magnificent. It's not an insult. Meryl Streep? I don't know. I give up. I'm not very good at this game at all. Here you go. If this lioness were to be voiced, she'd be voiced by Meryl Streep. I'm not sure how she feels about that. The lioness, that is, not Meryl. I'm sure Meryl would be, would be flattered. It's such a beautiful evening. Oh, Vim, it's the first night in a while where we haven't been rained on at this point. We haven't been desperately pulling down the rain covers and making ourselves our little tent. It's such fantastic fun because you end up with the blue tarpaulin wrapped in front of us and we use, um, oh, I don't have any of them handy. But we use of nuts and coffee and sugar to prop the roof up because if we don't, it pools. Yeah, we use our, our little, jars of, little jars of nuts that we take as snacks. We use it to prop the roof up so that it doesn't drip on us. <laughs> and my shoes occasionally. It's all worked out really well though. The lioness of course doesn't have the option of ducking into the cover. But I think the rain will hold off for tonight. Ah. Uh... Raisa, I think you've got a better one than I did. I think Whoopi Goldberg. Whoopi Goldberg work, Whoopi, oh goodness, Whoopi Goldberg works quite well, I feel. <laughs> this is the sort of thing that you end up thinking about at a roundabout. I think the longest hours, depending on what's happening, the longest hours are usually around about between 11 and 1 for me. I'm just checking to see what she's looking at. See if there's another lioness. But alas, there is not. Okay. We're going to sit with our lion. Hopefully we'll see you later on our Facebook Lives. Let's go back to Brent and his spectacular cheetah for the last few minutes. Well, they're still munching in. D'Artagnan has already eaten so much he's lying off to the right. And you can still see uh, we've now switched into infrared. Um, it, the sun got a little bit, the sun dipped a bit, and our ambient light became not enough for the low light camera. But so we've got infrared with it. Now I want to see. I heard, and I had a quick sweep around with my spotlight, that there's hyenas in front of us. And they haven't found the cheetah yet. Now the cheetah have made quite a bit of noise. Let's see if we can spot the hyenas. Wait, no, right, 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 they're coming in. Look at that. I think we're going to have to possibly extend a bit here, Kirsten. Keeping the hyenas off. Mm. 
you can still see they're still hungry and they're prepared to take on the cheetah and that's the, the fact that there are five of them i think if it'd been a single oh look at that isn't that incredible get away from my zebra you you thieving hyena you so we've only got two hyenas i said i thought i heard one just in front of us but now let's see what happens are they going to recall for re reinforcements now there's three hyenas I don't know two, that was the cheetah. Sorry, I got too excited there. Remember, this is live from Kenya. The rest of the cheetah trying to get as much of that zebra as possible. So this ties in to see that even though the cheetah are quite adept killers, they often lose their kills to other predators. Okay, so guys, we are going to leave you. If you want to keep with us, we are going to carry on this sighting on Facebook Live. If you want to stay with us.